Lesson 13 is somewhat of a catch-all for some odds and ends. All right, this is our first grade odds and ends lesson. And the first odd thing we're going to look at are two words, yesh and ain. These are technically nouns. Yesh technically means something like existence. <laughs> All right, trust me on this. This is going to sound pretty stupid. And ain is the opposite, non-existence. Now, the fact is, these are not really used as nouns in Hebrew, but because of the nature of uh, the language and the verb system, um, things like this take verbal sense to them. If I would say, yesh, ish, we have a clumsy sentence that may mean something like, existence is a man. A man exists. Now, the force of this sentence, that sounds kind of weird and bizarre, the force of this sentence is simply to indicate that there is a man. A man exists. There is a man. That's all we're trying to say here. We're not saying anything about him. We're just saying that he exists. Okay. And that's why uh, these... The, 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 the section in the book is called predication of existence, which is the technical term of saying we're taking a subject, a man, and we're predicating existence of that subject. The subject exists. Having said that, which sounds bizarre, you could probably just forget it all and realize how to translate these sentences. Yesh ish means there is a man. Okay? There is a man. It's that simple. So if we go back up to the two words that we're introducing in this lesson, instead of saying that they mean existence and non-existence, you can just remember that yesh means something like there is, and ain means something like <coughs> there ain't. All right? Did you hear that? Yesh, there is, but no, there ain't. Yesh, there is, but no, there ain't. If that helps you keep them apart, so be it. Huh? Now, how are we going to use these two strange words? Well, we've already seen the sentence, yesh, ish, there is a man. Let's add something to the sentence. Yesh, ish, ba'ir. Translate. There is a man in the city. All right, that's pretty easy. How about yesh, isha? There is a woman. Now, did you notice here the subject, man, is masculine singular. Here, the subject isha is feminine singular. What about yesh? No One size fits all. All right? So these don't have numbers and genders. They can go with anything. Let's try another one. Yesh isha babayeth. Translate. There is a woman babayeth in the house. Okay, we can make sense out of this. Now, what's ain isha babayeth? There is not a woman in the house. Or you could argue there is no woman in the house. Or finally, ain bayeth ba'ir. Now we've changed subjects again, so what? What does this say? There is not a house in the city. All right? Look, this is pretty easy. Once you learn that these two words exist, yesh, there are these two words, uh, it's just a matter of usually using this formula, there is or there isn't, uh, uh, to translate simple sentences. 
Okay, so this is predominantly vocabulary. Now, second topic.